Okay, uh, this is uh, Mathletics and how you can help at home. Uh, the home page is mathletics.co.nz and when you get here you can see a few things immediately. You can see the top uh, 100 students and 50 classes in the world and in New Zealand. Um, the 100 students uh, tab uh, updates every 24 hours, so there's 15 hours and 52 minutes remaining until this list is reset to zero, so um, our children definitely have a chance to appear on this list from time to time, um, and it does re uh, update every day. The top 50 classes is uh, spread over the course of a week, so you can see there's still 87 hours uh, until that list updates. Uh, much less chance of a, a primary school class um, appearing in this list unless they are a, a focused maths class. Many of the classes on here will be classes that are entirely focused on maths. Okay, so to sign in, they go up here to sign in, and each student has an individualized or personalized login and a password. And that takes them through when they sign into their own personal homepage. Uh, when they get through here, one of the first things uh, your, you as a parent will see is this little rocket on the left hand side. And this tells you how many points they've got this week. Uh, the goal across the whole of the senior school is to try and get a thousand points per week. That automatically qualifies them for a certificate and a chance to win the Mathlete of the Week at assembly. So 1,000 points per week is the general target. Uh, they don't need to be doing much more than that, certainly don't need to be putting in uh, huge amounts of hours to, to build up huge numbers of points. Um, a thousand points a week over the course of uh, 50 weeks in the year um, is going to give them a, a huge grounding in, in the maths that they need to do at their level. Also over on this left hand side uh, it tells you how many gold bars the student has, 18, and how many more to go in this particular curriculum course. Uh, you can click on how do these work for a bit more information. But basically, in each of these curriculum areas here, uh, if we click through, there are various activities for the student to complete. And when a student gets more than 8 out of 10, or 80% in the case of a test, um, they would achieve a gold bar. So this would be one of those 18 that uh, this student has achieved, um, nearest 1,000, because she has got a gold bar there. Where it's still blue, the student has made... Uh, more errors than are required and needs to practice and, and hone and master that activity um, before they'll be able to achieve a gold bar in it. Okay, go back to all topics. These topics here are covered throughout the year, so although students will get a grounding in all of these at some point in their class time, um, certainly they, they won't necessarily have seen all of these already at the start of the year. Um, so if they were to click into something like decimals, for example, that, which is um, often tackled later in the year, you can see that there's a lot less of activities have been mastered. And in fact, I wouldn't expect the student to be mastering any of these activities uh, at her curriculum level until she's been given some, some teaching in them. Um, similarly, things like uh, statistics, for example, I often cover in term four. Um, within each area... Um, where they have got gold bars in, that's absolutely fine. They can certainly attempt the things that they haven't got gold bars in, even if they haven't been explicitly taught. Um, they can give it a go. There's absolutely no problem with stu students going ahead and tackling more difficult things uh, straight away. They also have the option to go for something easier, which will take them back to um, slightly easier activities in the previous course, or along to something harder, which often is activities from the, the year level above where they're currently working. Finally, a word to say that all of these courses are tailored. They've been designed by the teachers at Eneglin School for the years three, four, five, six, and I think seven. So your student or the students have been set a course that is um, going to be challenging for them, but they should uh, certainly an activity selection that they should be able to master given some practice, given some instruction from the teachers at school, um, from mathematics and from yourselves at home. One other area is uh, live mathematics up the top here. Um, we certainly encourage the students to go and practice their live mathematics, which is their speed facts against other people around the world. But we certainly wouldn't want them to spend too much time doing that. Roughly sort of 20% of their time should be maybe spent up here, and the remaining 80% should be spent doing these activities, which are much more beneficial to their, their overall achievement in maths. Uh, feel free to have a look down these other uh, interesting um, tabs down the right-hand side. I'm not going to go into those in too much detail now. Okay, how does it work? Well, if a student clicks into an activity, for example, this one here in fractions, um, which hasn't been attempted, what fraction is shaded? Uh, it comes up with the activity. And often um, the activities will get progressively harder. <coughs> so this activity uh, is already part partway completed and is already at quite a hard stage. So I'm just going to deliberately get um, a couple of these wrong because the, the, the 
computer will then uh, um, automatically make this slightly easier. There we go. Okay. So often the activities will start quite simply, like this one here, what fraction is shaded, and a student can often work out um, with a little bit of uh, brain power, a little bit of applying what they've learned in, in class, um, the answer, in this case, five sixths. Uh, and then gradually, when they get a couple of questions right, the questions progressively get a little bit harder. In this case, now we've now got a whole number and a fraction. If they get stuck and are unable to, to solve the problem, that's when definitely having a parent alongside at home will help. Um, it's often tricky to know how to help them, so they have a built-in help function over here. This question mark gives you a little bit of guidance as how the student should be solving this problem. You click on the question mark, it brings up uh, a problem, and down the bottom you've got an easy problem, a medium problem, and a harder problem. You want to click into one of these until you find a problem that's similar to the one that, that you're faced with, in which case it's this one here with a hole shaded and a fraction of something else shaded. You then click on the play button down here, and it works like a slideshow explaining the different steps that need to be done to solve or to find the answer to this, this problem. Um, now, sometimes these are very straightforward in mathematics. Sometimes the students can read through these themselves and quickly see what they need to do, and away they go. Sometimes you will need to explain a little bit. This might be a good example of one of those, because it immediately is asking them to count the parts, which they can obviously do. But then it's going to make a bit of a jump here and say that um, three out of three parts is the same as one. Well, some students might need a little bit more help explaining um, that one whole is the same as having all three of the three parts. Um, so you might want to do a bit of explaining around that. Pizzas and pies are good for that at home. Um, obviously, they should be able to count that there's two out of the three parts on this one. And when they put them together, they can see that they've got one whole pizza and two out of three bits of another pizza, giving them the answer of one and two thirds. Um, you then click back to the activity. <coughs> And fingers crossed, they can then apply what they've learnt and see that they again have got one whole pizza in this case, and they've got one out of two bits of the other pizza. Okay, um, you shouldn't be doing these for the students, of course, um, but certainly give them some guidance, remind them to go to that help, and talk through that help with the students because it's not always obvious um, how to solve the problems, or even when it's explained in the mathematics program. Finally, again, if they've got this very tricky one. Go back to the help, and I'd imagine this is going to be one of the harder problems. And you can explain again that now you've got two complete pies, and a one out of however many bits are there. Same as this question here, you've got two complete pies, and two, four, six, seven out of the 11 bits that there are here. So that's mathematics and help function, and how you can help at home. Um, hopefully, just getting alongside your student is going to be help enough. Um, it's very useful for a parent to sit with this program alongside their student and know this is the sorts of things that, that my child should be able to do at their age. They've been assigned this course, as I said, which has been customised to suit them. And so all of the activities here are activities that, as the year goes on, they should be able to master. And so it, it makes it very, very easy for parents to offer that teaching at home, um, which they don't always get at school in such a, such a, a large environment. Any questions about mathematics, please come and uh, ask me. I'm happy to talk about it in more detail, but hopefully that gives you an overview of, of what it looks like, how you can help them at home, and the sorts of things that you and they should be doing. Thank you very much.